So I was looking at this section again and I'm not sure if you remember but recently I think last month I replanted this Eonium sunburst because it was much more in but it looks like the, the other Aeoniums are creeping forward again and it's starting to overwhelm the sunburst. So I'm thinking of moving it somewhere else, maybe a bit a bit more forward. Which is just as well since I was planning to remove the small ones here and maybe move the imbricata here and this one move it here so there would be some space right here enough space for the sunburst to grow into so that's what I'm going to do today so I've got several plants here this is a Graptoviria Douglas Hut this is a Pearl von Nurnberg two Victor Canes Graptopetalum Victor Cane or was it Graptoviria? I can't remember. This, these two are Graptopetalum Pentandrum Superbum. And I, I bought this one as Purple Pearl, but the Purple Pearl is much similar to the Pearl, Pearl von Nunberg. And according to some sources that I've read, the Purple Pearl is a hybrid based on the PVN. So I might just group them together. Oh, and these small ones here, 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 and somewhere at the back. Oh, even here. This is an Echeveria prolifera. As the name suggests, uh, they pro proliferate. So I managed to remove all of them. So the next thing to do is to move these two imbricatas and space them evenly because it's going uh, it's going to be warmer. It's spring now, and in a few months it's going to be summer, and they're going to be growing much faster by then. So I need to give them enough space now. So I finally shifted my two imbricatas and I rearranged them so the smaller one is here and the largest one is here and all I need to do is to move to move the sunburst. So the sunburst has been moved it's now out uh, exposed to more sun it should be happier in this spot from now on I picked this one up from the markets last year and it was tiny and was looking really really sad lots of damage and two or three seasons later looks like it has improved a lot I still haven't identified it because at first it was only growing um, flat leaves but now it start, it's turning freely so it's con confusing me at the moment. Well, uh, we have to wait until it grows even bigger and it starts uh, putting out flowers. That would be, at least that would give us more things to look at when it comes to identification. This is Project Lux, one of the more recent projects I work on from start to finish. And this one, this spot, features lots of echeverias so as you can see they've got I've got a lot of them lining up from side to side and uh, I was working on this sometime during winter the last month of winter and it's now spring so the main goal was to finish it before spring starts so they have the entire the whole of spring to establish 
before we get to summer and summer is usually when they start to you know they have to be protected from the elements because the sun can be so harsh so if they would be established by then they would really really uh, do much better in summer although most of echeverias get the most colorful and the most beautiful you know uh, they bring out their best colors when it's colder like this berkeley i've got another berkeley here it's back in spring and summer last year it was only green and a bit of purple uh, yeah uh, the thing to note with winter is that despite them looking their best they become dormant and they usually get damaged by the cold take this one for example this domingo has lots of dried out leaves and it hasn't shed them all yet and the rosette is pretty tight same with this bluette I try pulling out the, the dried out leaves but it looks like they are only partially dry as you can see here so that's the thing and they aren't fully dried out and they don't shed so I would usually have to wait until spring yeah mid spring or towards the end of spring before I can regroom them or at least until they start putting out more leaves so it takes a while before they regain their beautiful form this powder blue used to be a lot bigger but it has grown compact because of the uh, dormancy and underneath it the leaves have gone dry due to winter so I would have to wait until it gets warmer before it starts opening up again and starts growing fast so right now it's doing nothing this double delight in particular uh, as you can see most of the older leaves have already shed fallen off but it's still alive the thing here is I have to wait for the warmer months before this one gets out of dormancy it will replenish the leaves to regrow the rosette this ones will fall off once they get older but this ones would grow so don't be discouraged if your plants are starting to look sad it's normal it's normal part of winter and as long as they are still quite stiff they would be fine so expect this one to look much much better in a few months another thing to take note of is uh, plants when they grow like this edge of areas they get leggy and spring since they are uh, winter dormant this means that they're growing during the warmer months spring is a very good time to chop the head off to behead this Just remove a leaf yeah so as I was saying spring is a good time to chop the head off I would get to reset this one from it maybe some pops would grow along the stem and this one would grow roots after a few weeks but it's still quite cold now since it's still the start of spring so I'll have to wait maybe a few more weeks before I start working on my echeverias one of my Mexican giants started producing pops there's at least two here and the Mexican giant is one of my favorite cultivars so I'm really really looking forward to them growing another thing I'm planning to work on is to redo this bowl because as you can see everything has just grown pretty thick 
and it's they are starting to overwhelm the Mary 2 in the middle so I'm going to pull them all out and plant them back in or maybe replace some of the plants so let's see what I end up with Among all the plants that used to be in this bowl, I'm thinking of keeping the pearls because I like how they they really thrive in this bowl. But before I do that, I need to refresh the, the soil inside. There's lots of dead roots, detritus and all sorts of stuff inside. Look at all those roots. Damn. So the first order business is to replace the soil. And that's what I'm going to do now. Since I'm thinking of using the flapjack in the middle, I might have to yeah I might not have to fill it up first I'll stick it in then elevate as necessary around it to create a, a small mound around it because the roots of this one might already be deep so let's see how it goes so I've done setting it in and have mounded around it all I need to do is to add a bit more soil and start adding in the rest of the cuttings. I'm having second thoughts about this flapjack and I'm thinking of some swapping it with something else. There's something on my mind right now. I'm looking at it in the garden. I'm not going to show you yet. It's going to be a surprise but you will know in the next few minutes. Let's see how it goes. So other than the centerpiece, I have to start thinking about what else I'm going to stick in there. So there are a bunch of small cuttings here. And I might even be able to make use of some of my heads here. So maybe more rosettes or more sedums. I've also got several small ones here. They would work. The flapjack is now back in the pot. Poor guy. But I think you'll forgive me because I now have this black knight in the pot. It's huge, it's towering, and it is structural. I like how it looks. The center. It's very imposing. Surely going to get uh, lots of attention. I'll be putting these pearls back in. I'll just have to pick a spot and let them flow from, from there. So the pearls are in and I've added a bit more soil. I'm just going to stick in the rosettes. Baba. <laughs> another one here. And another one here. Maybe one more here and one last here. There we go. 
started filling up some more more greens, more blues, pinks and purples and let's see if I can keep it up still got some plant material here think of adding some yellows The beauty of having them in pots is that it's easy to remove them from the landscape. I'm going to end the day by moving this bowl back, back into the landscape. So it's been sitting here for a few days because I was just trying to get them to callus properly. And I think it's now safe to move it out to the elements again. It's just the start of spring, or at least it's still the first month of spring and it's it's not getting too hot right now so it's safe it should be safe for them they won't burn out in the sun this bowl with the black knight is finally back in its original spot I'm thinking I could also refresh this bowl right next to it but the way I've set it it's partly submerged so if I remove it now uh, parts of the landscape will just crumble and fall off So maybe I could just pull that pull the plants out with the bowl set in Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do next time It's already getting dark. So I guess I'll call it a day The Capri on top of it is looking quite sad So maybe I'll replace it with something that's large and I have two things on my mind it's either I use this golden glow or this Pachyveria myrtilla I'm leaning more towards this one because as you can see immediately uh, the colors stand out and while the golden glow is pretty you have to Take note that I have another golden glow somewhere there. So design-wise, using a golden glow here might be redundant. So, the myrtilla it is. This is a job for this weekend, I guess. Can't wait.